All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here on polar functions. We're graphing these bad boys, and we're gonna make some crazy graphs. Pretty fun here. Um, when I think polar, again, I think Polar Express, that dude, that dude loves to graph some polar functions right there. You can tell by his face, he's into it. Uh, let's do it, man. This is section 3.14, two parts to this bad boy, and 3.14, I think a pie. We got a lot of pie in here. In fact, the first one's got pie in it. We got pie everywhere. So let's graph a line. So we can graph lines, even though these are circular coordinate system. Uh, we know where pi over 3 is. It's roughly like up here, like this. Just no lines go in both directions forever and ever and ever. So we can plot lines. It's kind of like our special case. We're just going to say theta is always pi over 3. So that is possible. Awesome. Let's get to something a little more interesting. Not that lines aren't interesting. All right, let's take a look at circles here. So the polar coordinate system is made up of circles, so it's going to be really good for graphing circles. And let's check out how this is done. Uh, I went ahead and graphed the first one for you. So here's 4 cosine theta makes this circle right here. Spoiler alert, there's a picture of it. But let's talk about why. So let's really zoom in on circles. We're going to talk about the cycle, this whole positive negative thing. Uh, you actually did this. So this is number 20 from the last practice. Uh, so if you did the practice last time, you actually made these dots. So I had you fill in a table for 4 cosine theta. You plugged in different angles like 0, pi over 6, pi over 4 made these little decimals, and then plotted these little points over here. So if you went around the circle uh, and connected the dots, I went from what? I went from 0 to pi over 6 to pi over 4 to pi over 3 back down to 0, so if you connect the dots. And then something kind of cool happened. Remember, this 2 pi over 3 is this angle out here, but then we're going in the negative directions. We're not going 2 up. We're going 2 this way. So that's what causes it to circle back. You're actually going in the negative uh, direction with R, so it makes it kind of come back onto itself. So what's cool about this is you completed the circle by pi. You were done and done at this point. Uh, you made one trip around the circle. So there's some key features here. Uh, we love where we start, starting point. So when it's really nice to put theta as zero in because what's the cosine of zero? It's just one. And then one times whatever number is out in front will always give you that starting point. And for a cosine circle, it's nice. It's that polar axis intercept which is where it starts on there. That's super cool. Let's go ahead and look at this uh, in Desmos. I'm going to try to drop this link in the um, description. So there it is. There's 4 cosine theta. I already put it in. Let's go back and watch it be, uh, get graphed here. So here's the pole right here, 0. I know I start at 4. I'm 4 away from the pole. And watch what happens as I go towards like pi over 3. Ooh, it's graphing it. It's putting all the decimals in between. You know, we hit a couple points. But there we go around, and you can see, check out my angle, I'm almost at pi over 2. Here's showing the angle, and this is showing the R value going close to 0. As I come close, see the blue line is getting close to pi. I'm almost at pi, and see I'm finishing up my circle. That's one trip around. So that's one cycle. But really, you know, we normally go 2 pi. What happens is when I continue through, oh, I'm just tracing the circle again. So it's really going around. It's so fun, we're just kind of following this point around, and there he goes through it again. It's so fun, let's do it again. So I'm making the circle, graphing the circle, graphing the circle, boom, I'm overlapping, overlapping, kind of tracing, tracing, tracing. That's why uh, we have this little cycle of when it's actually done. That is so fun. Awesome. So the cycle here was one time around the circle, we got done by pi, and we were finished. And then we're going to come and talk about this positive negative thing coming up here. I'm going to wait till the end and kind of sum it up with sine here. Let's come on back here and check out sine. So how is sine going to be different? So let's go and zoom in on sine. So I'm going to do the same thing, maybe the, the cycle, and then we're going to figure out that positive negative thing. Um, I went ahead and made the table for you. So instead of having you crunch it, here it is. Here's 0 to pi right here. And let's go ahead and just plot these points. So what are some big differences here? Well, when I put 0 in for theta, I get 0 out. So check it out. My starting point is actually 0. So it's a little bit different. And then I'm building my way out here. Pi over 6 is at 1, 2. Um, and then pi over 4 is at 2.82 or something, and then pi over 3 is 3.4. I'm going to make this kind of rough. And then here's our point of interest here with sine. So the 0 didn't really uh, hook us up because 0 zero is um, right on the, the, the pole, uh, but pi over 2, when you put that in, that's when you get uh, 1. So if I put pi over 2 over theta, you get 1. So that's where you get that max distance, 1, 2, 3, 4, away from the pole right there. Awesome. Then what happens, you can see the symmetry here. It's the same numbers counting down. So we've got 3.4. We've got 2.828. I nailed that one. That one looks about perfect. And then 2, and then back to 0. So can you see what's going on here? Let's go ahead and draw that bad boy in. If we plot those points, whoosh, coming around, coming around. There we go. 
and then I finish it up. Awesome. So you can see as I go around, I'm going out to this maximum point, and then it starts to decrease uh, back to zero here. What would happen if I went around uh, the full unit circle 2 pi? Well, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, I'm going, uh, I'm going down to like, let's pick out this one, 7 pi over 6 is down here, but I'm at negative 2. I'm not going towards it. I'm going away for it. So, oh, it's going to just repeat these points again. Just like cosine did, you're repeating because of the negatives back around there again. So you could graph it all, but one cycle is really done when it is done within pi that whole cycle is complete. If I go around again, I'm just uh, writing on myself there. Awesome. Let's sum this bad boy up. So here's the general formula for circles. So write this down. It's R equals A cosine theta. A is going to be this maximum distance from the pole. It's like the amplitude of it. How far out is that bad boy there? Uh, same thing as for A sine theta. So what I mean by this positive, well, I was really talking about how does this thing open? So positive opens which, which direction? It opens what? Right. So it opens right. So what do you think happens when I make it negative? I'm going to flip it. It's just going to be the negative values. So this will actually open left. Awesome. So I got opens right or left with cosine. That's cosine. And if you want to draw a little picture, I'm kind of running out of room here, but there's the polar coordinate. Maybe we want to draw a little bit more. I'll try to fit this one in here, the little polar co coordinate in there. And then what happens with this? You make a rough sketch. So any positive cosine opens to the right. Any negative will do the same thing on the left side. Awesome. What about sine? What do you notice about sine? This is the one. Oh, I don't have it in there. I should have drawn that for you. But roughly, it was like this one. So it opens up. So it's going to open up. And then what happens when you flip it? That's right. It's going to open down. So the negatives just flip the direction. So that's good to know because we're really going to be trying to match these bad boys up. So if you want to draw a quick little picture here, which way they ha happen. I try to leave enough room. I hope there's enough room in there. Okay, sine opens up. Negative sign opens down. So that will really help you match these graphs uh, for circles. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at another shape, these roses. So these are pretty cool here, man. So what do you notice different about this? Like I've got to divide an odd and even, but let's take a look. It looks like about the same four cosine. Oh, wait a minute. I added a three in there. So let's write out the generic formula to make a rose. It's going to be R equals A cosine. And then I put, we're going to put some number in there. Let's call it N and theta. So that's going to be 1. When n is odd, we're going to get a shape down here. Or I can have the same thing over here. This will be uh, really the same formula. But over here, we're going to say, hey, n is odd, an odd number. So we're going to start with 3. And then over here, we're going to say n is even. And it's going to change our shape. So how is that going to look? So again, we don't really have to graph these by hand. We have to just kind of know what's happening and be able to talk about them. Um, so let's take a look at this. So I still got this kind of amplitude idea that I'm four out, and this is for cosine. And notice that's what our circle did. Great starting point. You can easily always plug zero in. Cosine of zero is one, so I'm going to be at four. So that's really nice to find that little starting point. How many petals do you notice here? Well, you can count them up. There are one, two, three petals going around the pole there. So there's three petals. And then we're going to go ahead and say, yeah, this gets graphed. And I'm going to show you in the calculator here in one trip around, just like a circle, zero to pi. So I want you to have the cycle of this, and then I'm going to show you here in the calculator. So there it is right there. That's pretty sweet. How's that different than even? Well, we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to do 4 cosine 2 theta. So now n is even. And how many petals do you count here? Uh-oh, we've got 4 petals. So this has 4 petals. All right, so what's going to be our rule here? So when n was odd, 3, I had 3 petals. So if n is odd, you will have n petals. But if n is even, what do you notice? You will have twice as many. Two made four. You will have two n petals. So write that down. So again, we're going to have to be able to field questions. How many petals or match this graph to this equation type of thing. So we really got to be able to talk about these and describe these. Awesome. And again, when I go to graph this one, it turns out that this is actually going to have a cycle of 2 pi. So let's see that in action. Let's go ahead and throw this in decimals and see what we get. And which one do we want to do here? Let's do... Let's start with the odd one. So let me type that bad boy in. So we had, this is when we had three. And let's see how it gets graphed here. So it's kind of cool. It's, it's in stages here. So as the um, angle gets bigger, so see how I'm getting the blue angles going to 90. I'm going all the way up to here. So that's where I am at 90 degrees. So 90 degrees, I've drawn this much of the rows. Now continue through. Boom, I'm over here. I'm coming on through. And see how I'm done at pi? 
the angles over there at pi. Boom, I finished my rows. If I continue through, because it's kind of fun, there's two pi go through it. Awesome. So how is that difference when I change that to two? Let's take a look at two. So now I'm coming around, and now check it out. I'm at pi. So I'm, I'm down here. Coming around, I'm sorry, that's pi over two. Coming around to pi. Oh, I'm only halfway done. See, I'm only halfway done here at pi. I'm, I'm not there yet. So I'm going to keep that train rolling. And there it is, nice and pretty. That took me the full two pi. That's fun right there, man. I could do that all. All right, let's go ahead. That's pretty cool in the graphing calculator. You can see the different cycles of those roses right there. Let's slide on down and see what is the difference between this and if we do sine. So if we're going to do sine, all right, what changed here? I've got three sine, five theta. So notice that this graph only goes out three circles. R is three. And I've got five. What does that make? That makes five petals. So what did you notice about sine? Well, if you plug zero in, you don't get that, you get zero, because the sine of zero is zero, so it's only going to give you the origin here, or the pole, to start with. So that's kind of a bummer. So its point of interest is pi over two. If I plug pi over two in, times it by five, then you're going to get your uh, nice friendly number, and it's going to cause it to come out to this angle here. So long story short, sine will not start on the polar axis. It's always going to be off that polar axis, and then it's going to go evenly around the pole right there and get something like this. So again, for an odd rose, I can get around in just pi, no worries. So odds will always be a pi cycle. Awesome, how about evens? So uh, let's check this out. I've got five sine four theta. So what do you think's gonna happen? I didn't draw this one. What do you think my guess is? Well, I hope it's more than just a guess. There should be eight, because two n, the rule says two n. And for the cycle, what's gonna happen? Any even cycle, because you're making those extra petals, you actually have to go around a full two pi. We don't have that repeat action going on something like this. So let's go ahead and graph this in the calculator uh, and see what we get. Okay, so we're looking at five sine, and then we are looking at four theta. So if you use that xt theta, that's why it has the different things for the different modes that we can get into here. Um, so now that looks nice right there. Now some things are going to happen here on your calculator, depending on what model you have. Let's just graph it and see what happens. So if I just graph this bad boy, ooh, that is not the best looking graph. F is not very smooth. So let's try to smooth this out. I mean, it's cool. I get a general idea of what's going on. Let's look at the window for a second. Holy cow, what did we add? Well, we added theta. We have to know the angle. So your calculator may default to something else, but mine went from 0 to 2 pi. I can see 0 to 2 pi. So that's a full cycle for an even. And then this step is like how uh, many angles do you want to plot? Do you want to plot pi over 3 angles? So if you plot something, let's just do pi over 3. I don't know what's going to happen here. So I'm going to type in pi divided by 3. So I'm only going to plot every pi over 3, so <laughs> that's terrible. So that's not a good window. So maybe I want more of like every 5 degrees or something. Uh, let's go pi over, I don't know, I'm going to say 24. So now I've got this smaller decimal here. So now when I graph, it looks pretty good. So really, if you want something super smooth, we could do something like 0.05. That's going to show a lot of points in there, and now it kind of rounded out. So that's pretty good right there. What else is interesting in your window? Well, maybe, I don't know what your mind is defaulting, negative 10 to 10. Um, I think we have a, a zoom feature, zoom square probably, that kind of squares it out. Let's see what that does here. Uh, I guess that's pretty similar to what I was, so it kind of makes it all look uh, zoomed out. So maybe you got to play around with your window, you couldn't see it all, but it's something like that. Also, one thing on mine that I, uh, yours may not be doing, the older calculators just show you, I like to watch it get graphed. You know, I like to see it go through the motions. So if you come over here to the left of where you put your equation in, uh, you can change the color if you like, but change this bad boy to the little pin. That's the little pin drawing it. So now I like to see it be drawn. So, ah, there it is, there it is, which is really nice so you can see it. And I could smooth this out more because um, it's still looking a little pointy, isn't it? Oh, it changed this when I went and drawed it. So I, I'm, let's go see if I can go back to 0.05. I want to show more angles. Now that's smooth right there. Woo! There it is. So you can see it kind of going through and drawing all the parts, looping around. So that's the beauty of these. You can make some crazy pictures in here. Feel free to explore, play around, some wild things in there. So, holy cow. Okay, we got that nice picture there, so that's pretty cool. Let's make a rough sketch of this. So I just want this to be really rough. Uh, don't freak out. There is a precise way to do this and calculate it all and make it look nice and pretty. But for our needs, we just kind of kind of recognize to be able to describe graphs and see what's going on here. So I know it's five. the max distance is five away from the pole. I know there's eight petals, so and they're evenly spaced. They're not going to start on the 
polar axis like cosine, they're going to be evenly spaced around the circle, and I may be a little bit off. I'm just trying to get a ballpark idea of these different petals going around. There's eight of them right there. And then I'm just going to try to, my best here to, to draw this. Let's see what happens here. So I know I start at zero, zero. Sign starts here. I'm going to come out to here. Oh, that was pretty good. Good start. It could go downhill from here. I'm looping through. And then I'm looping through again. Oh, it's a stretch. I'm looping through again. Oh, this is not too shabby. It could definitely be worse. How about that? I'm coming through, coming through again, hitting that point, and I'm coming down. Oh, it's starting to get rough here. The more you get in there, oh, oh no. There it is right there. So not terrible. Hopefully uh, with paper and pencil, yours looks a little nicer. But I just want a rough idea, ballpark idea, of what's going on with that rose right there. Awesome. Okay, let's see if we can describe these polar functions here. So take a look at the first one. First, got to decide, is it a line, circle, or a rose? Well, I know because there's an N in here that it's going to be a rose. It's going to be an odd rose at that. So how many petals will there be? There'll be seven petals in this bad boy. So maybe circle it or square it or oval it. I don't know what that shape is. Uh, what's the max distance from the pole? It's going to be two. No worries there. And then for an odd rose, what's the cycle to get around one time? I can do that when it's odd between zero and pi. Awesome. Let's try the next one. Look at this bad boy. There's no N is one technically is the, to makes the circle. It's a circle. Which way will this open? So sine, remember, is up or down. And because he's positive sine, this bad boy is going to open up, which is nice. So we're going to say it's a circle that opens up. And the max distance is right here. It's going to go out to 9. And when I do a uh, circle, circles are always from, it, I can get around in pi. No worries there. And then the last one here, um, N is 6. So that's a rose. It's an even rose, which means my petals will double. So instead of 6, it'll be 12. A lot of petals on that bad boy. And the max distance here is going to be 8. And remember, when it's even, we have to do a full 2 pi to make it all the way around, or else we're just going to get a half rose. Nobody likes a half rose. That's a bummer. Finish him out. Awesome. All right, moving on here. Let's take a look. So I gave you some already graphed polar functions here, and we're going to write the equation of them. So now we just got to kind of look at it and see what's going on here. So I know this is a circle. Then I got to think, is it opening up, down, left, or right? It's opening right. And I know that's cosine because cosine is always on there. So I know I'm talking about r equals what? Cosine theta. So I know it's a circle, cosine theta. Now, how far away does it get? It only gets two away, so I'm going to put a two there. So we can write the equation. Oh, these are fun. I like these. All right, definitely looking at a rose here uh, with four petals. So a rose with four petals. Now the question is, is it sine or cosine? Well, it doesn't start on the polar axis, so it can't be cosine. So I know it's going to be sine. And then how many? We've got four petals, so be careful. Remember, it's half that if we go backwards this way, because I'm going to double n, so that would actually be uh, sine 2 theta. And then how far out did it go? 1, 2, 3, 4 out. So this will be put a as 4. And then there is our equation for that rose right there. Nice. Uh, how about this bad boy? It looks like I'm back to circle land, so I'm a circle. Which way is it opening up or down? So it's sine. I know because it's opening down, I'm going to have a negative sign. How far out did that go? One, two, three, four, five. So there's my A. And then for sine, it's just theta in there. Awesome. So there's my equation. I think these are fun. Just kind of write those up, see how you do. Awesome. Okay, let's wrap it up here, the last slide. So we are going to try to sketch them, but I tried to make these pretty doable. Um, and uh, then we're going to talk about some interesting things. So r equals 3. What happens when r equals 3? I don't think we've talked about this yet. This means r, the radius, is always 3. So it's 3. So pick any angle. It's always 3. I don't care if it's uh, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2. So check it out. And don't forget all the guys in the middle, too. So I'm just hitting the, the, you know, the special angles. But they're always 3. So what shape is this? This is another way to make a circle. So I can actually make a circle just by saying the rate is always 3. I don't care. Pick any angle. So that's a nice one to draw. So what's going on at the endpoint? So what we're going to do is kind of select some regions here. And I'm looking from pi over 6 to pi over 2. So I'm kind of looking from when I was drawing from pi over 6. I'm sorry, not to, all the way over to pi. So I'm looking at just this chunk of the circle. So we're going to highlight some parts of the shape. In this case, a circle. So what are the endpoints? So remember our points we write as r comma theta. So I know what r is, spoiler alert, r is 3. And my angle, my first point of the endpoint. So we're just kind of finding where did this start. This is going to start at pi over 6. 
And then where's the other one? Well, I know it's at three, and I'm finding this endpoint right here for this region there. So it's going to also be over here at pi. Okay, that was a fantastic one. I like that one. All right, rough shape here. Oh my gosh, I'm scared of these bad boys. Uh, key things, four away from the pole. I'm odd, so I know I've got three pedals. I'm cosine, so I know, thank goodness it's cosine. It starts at one, two, three, four. Cosine always starts here. Can we break this up into three equally uh, por portions of the circle? Sure, just divide 360 by three. Um, so I'm gonna come out here and put a dot at 120 or two pi over three, and then at four pi over three, and then I'm back. And then I'm gonna start to draw this bad boy. So again, I know I'm hitting the origin here. So I'm guessing it does something like this. Again, these can be super rough when you're drawing. I'm not too concerned. Use your calculator if you need to, to get a rough idea on these. I'm, I'm totally down with that. Um, let's talk about the endpoints. So now where was this thing at pi over six? Well, a little harder to tell uh, at pi over six because uh, of the positive or negative. So we're gonna have to plug it in. So we are actually gonna have to plug in Ooh, I hope I have room here, four cosine of three times pi over six. So we're gonna plug theta into the equation. This is a little bit of work here. So we're gonna plug it in and then let's clean this bad boy up here. So that's gonna give me four times, um, this is nice because they cancel and give me two. This is just pi over two. And then if we think about what is the cosine value at pi over two, we're gonna say what? It's gonna be uh, cosine pi over two is zero. Well, that's nice, that worked out well. So that's gonna give me zero. So my first point here is going to be uh, what? It's going to be zero at pi over six. So don't try to use your graph, especially when you draw it by hand. If you had your calculator, you can trace and find it, but at pi over six, I'm actually back to zero right there. Awesome, let's go ahead and find the other one here. Okay, the other endpoint is pi over 3, so I'm going to plug it in for theta. So I'm going to say the other endpoint of this region is 4 cosine of 3 times pi over 3. I'm kind of, my handwriting is so big I had to infringe on the other one. Sorry about that. Uh, clean this bad, bu bad boy up, and I'm looking at uh, what? Those cancel, so I'm looking at the cosine of just pi. Okay, so what is cosine of pi? So cosine of pi is negative 1. Be careful, there's negative signs there. So it's negative 1, so that would be 4 and negative one there, so I'm plugging points in. And so what does that tell me here? So that means r is negative four when the angle is pi over three. So we're really trying to plug in points and see what's going on with the points of this. So uh, think about pi over three is up here, so I'm facing this direction, but remember the negative makes me go this direction, and there I am right there. So the idea is we're kind of plugging in points, seeing what's going on. We're supposed to kind of highlight this region that was drawn there. Now, I realize that's tricky. So let's go to the calculator just to help us out here. So our equation was what? 4 cosine 3 theta. So uh, we're going to say 4 cosine 3 theta. And the whole idea of this is if I go to my window, what was my endpoints here? It was from pi over 6 to pi over 3. So I just want that chunk. So I'm going to say, hey, pi divided by 6 is where I want to start. That's your minimum angle. Pi over 3 is where I want to finish. And that's all I want to see, man. That is it. So let's just grab that portion of it. And you see that little chunk right there? That's it. We're talking about from there to there, that little wing of it or something. So where is that? If I highlight that bad boy, let's go highlighter mode. I'm talking about this right here. So again, that's the whole idea of uh, with these endpoints. And we're just looking at that. We can restrict it and do different things. But really, our goal is to practice plugging in points. Um, into the function and finding points on the actual shape. Okay, go ahead and pause it. Try the last one by yourself, and then I'll post that answer up, uh, and we'll see how you did there. All right, here we go. I kind of zoomed in on this bad boy over here. So what happens when you put pi over 2 into this function? Um, you should get 5 as the point coming out. So at pi over 2, that makes sense. I'm up here at the top of your circle. We knew it was a circle, so hopefully you drew that circle in. I hope it looks a little better than mine. Uh, and then what's happening from the endpoint? So I'm going from pi over 2, I'm tracing down to when I get to 0. So I'm talking about this part of the circle. So that one's easier to see than like a, a rose shape. I'm going from there to there. So I'm only talking about this chunk of the circle with those restricted endpoints right there. Hopefully that panned out for you. That's it, man. Good luck on the mastery check. Peace out.